Hey folks, just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. Um, hard to believe it's almost 2020 already. I just can't believe how quick time's been flying. Um, I took an unexpected break from YouTube the past couple months due to some unfortunate circumstances. Well, uh, my grandfather was dealing with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and his breathing was getting more and more difficult each day. And uh, he put up a long and tiring fight and sadly he passed away on October 27th. Um, he went peacefully though. He wasn't in any pain and he was surrounded by all of his family. So, you know, it was it was tough watching him go, but in the end we're glad everything went peacefully and he didn't have to suffer. And uh, now we're just happy knowing that he's with my grandmother again after 23 years. Um, those of you who know me personally or who have followed my YouTube channel for a long time, you know that uh, my grandfather and I were very, very close. I was basically like his right-hand man. Uh, I was very fortunate to have him living right across the street from me and uh, a lot of his uh, influence on me was at a younger age. He, uh, he's the one that got me interested in agriculture and tractors and you know wrenching on equipment. He basically turned me into a gearhead and um, you know he was just a very big influence on me and we were very close. We did everything together. We went to tractor pulls, we went to dirt track races, we went to uh, you know shows and we used to go around and visit all the local farmers and he used to take me everywhere and we just did everything together you know that was it's those kind of relationships that you know the memories last forever he was considered a man of velvet and steel if you will he was a hard-nosed farmer who had it tough growing up but he was a loving family man it was like two op two polar opposites it was actually very interesting he was quite a character um so, like I said, it's been tough without him, but, uh, you know, we're, we're keeping on, just, you know, living day by day. Um, if you saw the video I posted back in August, uh, I took it upon myself to restore his two farm tractors that he saved from the farm, the uh, John Deere 60 and the Ford 4000. Um, I think in that video, if I remember correctly, I had the sheet metal off the tractor, but that's about as far as I would gotten with it. Um, that's been a long-term restoration project, or long-term goal, I should say. For years, he always talked about how he wanted to get that tractor running again. Well, that and the 4000, how he wanted to get them running and, and driving again. So I started working on the 60 back in August. Uh, if you remember, I filled the cylinders and the, the transmission with diesel fuel and PV blaster to try and loosen everything up. And that was, I mean, that was almost five months ago. So um, it's had plenty of time to soak, so everything should be lubricated now. Um, a couple weeks after I made that video, uh, my uncle and I actually moved it out from behind the barn where it was sitting. As you can see, uh, we took the loader tractor and just lifted it up by the rear end and dragged it all the way around here. So now it's out in the open. It's closer to the shop. It's a lot easier for me to get tools over here to work on it. Um, so I've just been wrenching on it little by little, as you can see. Um, whenever, basically whenever I'm home from school, whenever I find time, um, over Thanksgiving break, I took some PB blaster and I basically just soaked the entire tractor and then I did it again last week when I got home for uh, winter break. So uh, I figured, you know, this tractor has been basically spent its entire life outside. Um, as far as I know, it never really spent a night indoors except when it was new. Um, so it's been exposed to the elements for 65 years and uh, God knows what surprises await you when you're working on a tractor that's been outside like that for so long. Uh, my grandfather quit farming in 85, so this tractor got parked around that time, and it sat on the farm for about 15 years, and then when he sold the farm in the early 2000s, uh, he towed it up here to my uncle's farm just around the corner, and it sat down in the back there for another 10 years or so. Uh, then my uncle moved it back here behind the barn about three years ago, and I convinced him to move it back, or move it up here uh, into the open, so now it's, at least we don't have to worry about weeds growing. You may have noticed uh, I picked up another set of rims and tires for the tractor. Um, it originally had 13 638s on double bevel rims, as you can see here. These have been on it for years and years and years. Um, but the rims had basically rotted out because they were sitting with calcium chloride in them for so long. This rim was worse. Uh, this one actually broke when we moved it out of the back 40 a couple years ago. The rim broke right off. Um, this one is not in as bad of shape. I, I think most of the calcium actually leaked out. You can see it's not rotted as bad. Um, but it's still, I mean, still not that great. And the tires are pretty much junk too, which is a shame because they still have decent tread on them. 
Um, so these tires were not usable, obviously. So I actually picked up a set of uh, another set of rims and tires. Uh, these are nothing fancy. These came off of a John Deere 50 parts tractor. Um, they're just 11 by 38s on uh, double bevel rims. I had to make sure to find a set with double bevel rims because uh, this tractor has the, the dished offset rear wheels for vegetable rows, um, which are kind of unusual. You don't see, I mean, I, I see plenty of them around here because this is vegetable country, but um, they're not, not exactly easy to find. And uh, as far as I know, these rims don't, or these centers don't work with drop center rims, um, which is all I was able to find. Like I was checking Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and all the the used rims and tires I could find had drop centers which were no good um, I had to find a set with double bevel rims like these and uh, these popped up for sale pretty cheap at a repair shop just a few miles down the road so I picked them up like I said they're nothing special um, they're actually a little bit undersized the original tires were 13 6 by 38 these are 11 uh, 11 2 by 38 I think are just no, just 1138s. They've got the old designation. <laughs> so that just goes to show you how old these tires are. Um, I'm going to get them mounted up on the centers, and we're going to, what we're going to try and do is roll the tractor around the yard uh, with it in gear, and I'm just going to pop the clutch in and out a few times and see if I can get that, uh, get the engine broke loose. You know, it's been sitting with water in it for so many years, and now it's been soaking in PV blaster and diesel fuel the past couple months. So. Um, I figure if we roll it around the yard in gear, it should be able to break it loose. We're either going to do that or maybe weld up a couple pieces of pipe and make a big wrench to fit on the flywheel. Um, but either way, the tractor still needed another set of rims and tires just so we can move it around. Because eventually what I'd like to do is actually roll it up into the shop so we can work on it in there. Because um, like I said, the rims that were on it were just junk. But my grandfather used to swear by calcium chloride for liquid ballast back in the day. That's basically what everybody used. And it was good in its time, but not anymore. Um, so, yeah. So, I ended up getting new rims and tires for it. I got the the rim off that was on this side. That came off pretty easy. But um, for some reason, the lug bolts on this side were all rusted in. And I, even with an impact wrench, I could not get them out. So, uh, what we're going to have to do is just get the torch out here and cut the bolts off and uh, then get the then we'll get the clamps off since we're here at the back of the tractor I guess I'll just show you some of the other uh, interesting surprises that I've found and uh, see what we're gonna be looking into you know moving forward with this restoration uh, the first thing you might notice is these uh, homemade stabilizer bars that are welded onto the draw bar uh, apparently my grandfather used to have a lot of trouble with the hitch pivot pin up front there braking because they, they pulled a lot of wagons with this tractor uh, you know pulling like tomato baskets and stuff like that through the field you could even see how the, the draw bar hole is all egged out um, they did a lot of wagon pulling with this tractor and for some reason they used to break the, the pins for the draw bar um, so he had his mechanic rig up these uh, couple pieces of steel for stabilizers um, it's definitely the, dish, the, the definition of a, uh, a backyard or a farmer repair. I mean, you can see this ain't no professional weld. Um, but, you know, I guess they, they serve their purpose in their time. Um, he welded it right onto the drawbar, but you can, see where the, you can see where it's all cracked along here. And uh, I'm not sure if he welded it up here to the, the bottom of the, the transmission case or not. Um, but it's definitely a sketchy repair. So this is the first thing that's going to go. Um, it'll add a couple pounds for the scrap um, But yeah, that's got to go the yeah. next thing I noticed was the a piece of the, the rear axle housing uh, Casting broke off here. This is for like a cultivator mount or a, a step um, I never got the story on how this happened I'm actually kind of curious to find out but as you can see there's a chunk missing out of the top and I mean that that piece has got to be long gone It looks like it's been gone for years um, so what I'm thinking of doing is having a shop maybe weld this up maybe just form another um, piece and then weld that on there to match the other side a lot of guys are telling me just to leave it and not worry about it but you know I'm, I'm I want to do this restoration the right way and uh, I'm a little bit OCD about that um, it just doesn't look right being broken off so I'm gonna uh, figure out a way to get that welded back up um, as you can see, I, I originally thought these were all bolts that had broken off inside the mounts here, but I'm being told by a couple two-cylinder experts that the uh, 
the factory actually put pieces of cork in these holes to, I guess, save the threads if they weren't being used. So that was a bit of a relief. Um, I mean, I know this tractor had a cultivator set up on it at one point, and it also had a 45 loader on it early in its life when it still had the single front wheel on it because uh, the, the 45 loader doesn't work with a wide front end. Uh, but my grandfather did have a 45 loader on this tractor. He actually uh, he swapped it over from his A when he sold the A and uh, ran that loader on this tractor for a couple years. Um, and then he, I'm not sure what, what the next loader tractor was, probably the 4000. Um, so this tractor did have a 45 loader on it at one point. I just I wasn't sure if maybe these were bolts that had broken off from the loader mounts or what, but uh, I think they're just pieces of cork that were shoved in there from the factory. So I'm hoping that's the case because if those are all broken bolts, that's going to be a, a fun time getting those out. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, this tractor had no battery box or seat. Um, it did have the seat on it back when it was parked, obviously, um, you know, on the farm. And I've seen the seat on it in a couple of old pictures, but I've, I don't remember this tractor having a seat on it. Uh, for what I've been told, the same backyard mechanic that made these stabilizer bars also rigged up a, uh, a custom battery box mount for the seat. And uh, evidently it didn't, it didn't last very long. Or... I guess I could say it served its purpose, but it didn't last. Um, you can see what's left of it. <laughs> so uh, it's obviously going to need a new battery box and seat. But uh, like I said, for as long as I can remember, this tractor had no seat or battery box. So this has definitely got to go. You can see I took the toolbox out. I just got it's sitting on the uh, the operator's platform here. Uh, just got a bunch of random parts in it. Like here's what's left of the coil and. Here's the sediment bowl that I took off. That's got to be cleaned. And just a bunch of random nuts and bolts and crap in here. Um, those have been in there for years. <laughs> uh, next problem I'm a little concerned about is the uh, the shifter is broke. You can see down there. I, I can basically pull this whole thing right out. I have no idea how that happened. Um, I'm not sure if it's just years of rust accumulation or what. But um, And I'm also pretty sure this shift lever is not supposed to be bent like that. Um, God knows how long that's been that way, but yeah, see I, I can pull this whole thing right out So that's not good. That's got to get fixed uh, I'm just I'm I've been leaving it in there like that just to try and prevent water from getting down in there But uh, that's for all that that's the best I can do for right now uh, You can see where the bolts the mounting uh, Bolts broke off for the this is the mount for the dash column um, That was fun to get off so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that either. That, that won't be the first rusty or broken bolt I have to deal with on this tractor. I can promise you that. Coming around to the clutch side here. Um, my grandfather always told me he had constant trouble with the clutches on these two cylinders. He just wasn't a big fan. of. He liked the hand clutch. He didn't have a problem with the hand clutch setup itself. But he always hated having to adjust the uh, the forks here. There's a, there's a set of forks inside this pulley here. And you have to, he said he was constantly adjusting them because um, the clutch would always get out of adjustment. Um, they say what you're supposed to do is keep the clutch engaged and let the pulley spin when the tractor's idling in neutral uh, to keep the bearing lubricated and keep the clutch parts from getting worn out. Um, but I have a feeling my grandfather never did that. I, I just don't think it was something he knew to do because um, he, uh, he told me how he was always having clutch trouble with this thing. Um, so the clutch is probably going to have to get replaced or completely redone. Uh, the pulley is missing. Uh, the uh, pulley cover, I mean, is missing. Um, I don't know what happened to that. And if you notice, the uh, one of the, the splines on the clutch driver is also broke, but I heard they ran it like that for years without a problem. I mean, it's not going to cause any damage, but it's not something you should just let go either. Uh, so that's going to have to get replaced as well. Um, I mean, this, you can see the slop in the in the handle and in the linkage and everything so it's you know it's seen better days but it's all going to get tore apart and rebuilt so and just you know another thing to add to the list if you look down here underneath it looks like that uh that piece of flat steel there got broke at some point too i'm not sure if that's factory or not i don't know if maybe that backyard mechanic welded that in there to keep the drawbar stabilized also um and if you look on that side you'll see one of the bolts for the main housing is broke or missing I don't know what the story is behind that either, um, but I doubt my grandfather would have run it like that, so that's going to have to be addressed as well. 
Working our way up to the front here, uh, as you can see, I've got the intake and exhaust manifolds covered up. The exhaust manifold was left exposed for God knows how long. I mean, there was the uh, the up pipe was missing for years, so you know, without a doubt, there's water down inside that engine. Um, I think the intake manifold also got water in it because a chunk actually cracked and broke off of it when I was working on it back in the summer. So uh, I'm going to have to just replace the whole intake and exhaust manifold. Um, you can get a, a a good quality aftermarket intake and exhaust manifold kit from Steiner Tractor for a little less than 300 bucks. I've been asking around and everybody seems to think they're the best uh, manifold kit as far as aftermarket goes. So I'm probably just going to go that route. As you can see here, it's still got the original generator on it. They never converted it to an alternator. And uh, surprisingly, it actually does turn still. Um, I was surprised to find that out. Um, and the water pump pulley turns and the, the fan turns as well. So that's not locked up, which is a good sign. Um, so I'm going to, what I'd like to do is, I mean, I'm not sure how far gone this generator is just from being exposed all those years, but uh, I am going to keep the original generator set up. I'm not going to convert it to an alternator. Um, I'll probably just get a new generator. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there. Um, but I will be keeping the original uh, positive ground uh, system with the generator. I'll probably just run a single 12 volt battery though. I don't want to have to deal with two 6 volt batteries. So I uh, blew out the radiator with the leaf blower uh, just to get some of the gunk and crap out of it and uh, what I'm probably going to do is just send this off to a shop to get recored and redone. Um, I'm not sure what the going rate is on a brand new radiator for one of these things but I mean this one could probably be redone. I'll have to uh, you know tear further into it and really look at it. I'm noticing a little bit of damage back in here, if you can see that. Um, I'm not sure if they could, you know, repair that or if, if I'm better off maybe just getting another radiator for it. But I'd probably, I, I may just end up getting this one rebuilt or record. I'm not sure. Um, and then moving up towards the front, I'll rebuild the steering column and all that. Rebuild the, you know, power steering. There's really not a whole lot to these setups. They're actually pretty simple. I mean, you can see the hoses are all rotted away. That's... You know, to be expected. As far as the front axle is concerned, uh, I said this before, but this tractor actually did not come with this round tube wide front axle when it was new. This tractor originally had a single front wheel, um, the 10 inch 6 ply or 8 ply single front wheel, and uh, my grandfather converted it over to a wide front end. Um, I actually am a fan of wide front ends. I do like wide fronts better than narrow fronts, but I uh, I'm a bit of a purist also, so I do want to you know, convert this tractor back to the way it was when it was new. So my goal is to eventually convert it back to a single front wheel. I actually found out that this front axle is technically not correct for this tractor. Um, since this tractor has had 38 inch wheels on it since it was new, um, this front axle is actually set up for a tractor with 42 inch rear rubber. The, the center part of the axle is the same, but the spindles or knees are uh, the wrong size. These spindles are actually a couple inches taller than the correct ones for a tractor with 38 inch rubber. Um, the tractors with 42 inch rubber had these taller spindles, which I think are 19 and 3 quarters inch tall. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, I'll have to check the parts book. Uh, but like I said, the spindles are incorrect. And uh, this tractor has 750 by 18 front wheels, which I know are also not correct for a tractor with 38 inch rear tires. Um, but I guess that's just what my grandfather could afford at the time. He got the oversized uh, front wheels and the taller spindles. Um, so if I'm keeping the wide front axle for the time being, it's going to get the correct spindles. So maybe when the time comes, I'll uh, ask around and see if uh, somebody could trade for the shorter spindles that will be correct for this tractor. Um, and if you notice the way it's sitting too, um, the front end sits up a little higher anyway. Um, so those 18-inch front tires just have to go. I never really liked the way they looked anyway. I came across another uh, homemade job here. Uh, my grandfather's mechanic thought he was a handyman, I guess. Uh, looks like it's got a homemade tie rod assembly on this side. I don't know what the story is behind it, but you can see it's starting to crack and come apart, so that's going to have to get replaced as well. Now, as far as engine work is concerned, um, I would like to try and get a little more power out of this tractor. I'm not going to do anything crazy, though. I mean, it, I'm not going to, like, build this into a dedicated puller or anything like that. Um, but I do plan to use this tractor for a lot, like uh, maybe taking it to the occasional plow day or, uh, you know, taking it down to the county fair for the tractor pulls. So I do want to get a little bit more power out of it. 
Um, so what I'm planning to do is board out maybe uh, 90 thousandths over, I'm thinking, and uh, put high compression pistons in it just to get a little more umph out of it. So uh, that's the plan for that. But uh, I, I don't know what condition um, the internals of this engine are in. Um, like I said in the previous video about this tractor, uh, the engine was rebuilt back in 71 because it cracked a block. Um, so I know it's been overhauled once and uh, I'm not sure what it's going to look like when I tear this thing apart. I, honestly, I don't even know if this block is even cracked. This block could be cracked too. Um, just from having water in it all those years, but I'm, you know, I don't want to jinx it. Um, I've heard some guys put uh, the propane uh, manifolds on them to get a little more power. Um, I might look into that too. I'm really not sure. I have to really look around and see what kind of, you know, upgrades guys are doing. I know some guys like to run the power blocks, which were an aftermarket uh, add-on, but I don't want to do anything like that. I'll just uh, show you some of the pieces of sheet metal I took off that are sitting here. Um, I mean, everything's pretty rough. This is a uh, oval muffler, which is actually not for a 60. It's meant for a 30 series tractor. I'm pretty sure these were introduced with the 30 series. Um, this tractor originally had the, the downdraft orchard exhaust that, uh, with the tailpipe that went out behind the tractor because it was a demonstrator. Um, so my grandfather ran that setup for years, and then once that finally, I guess, rotted apart, uh, he replaced it with this muffler, which is supposed to be a lot quieter. But it's not correct for a 60, so uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna replace it with one of these. I'm gonna what I would like to do is put a uh, a factory stack on it, but maybe hollow out the inside so it's basically a straight pipe. Uh, I want it to look stock, but I want it to sound good too. And the straight pipe will give it a little bit more power uh, for pulling and things like that. So, like I said, what I want to do is put a stock appearing uh, straight pipe on it. Uh, I think that would be kind of cool, and it would sound really good too. But this, this oval muffler is junk. This thing's got to go. I mean, you can see how it's all rotted out. Um, the hood is also in less than ideal condition, and the uh, the gas tank is pretty much junk. Uh, it's It could probably... Oh, you can't see it here. It's under the shield. But it could probably be repaired, but I feel like it would be easier to just buy a parts tractor that has a, a good hood and a good fuel tank ready to go. Um, this hood is seen... Lots of abuse, if you can't tell. Uh, it's got a lot of dings and dents in it, and uh, you can see the bolt holes are all uh, rusted out. This side's got some uh, rot through it, I guess uh, from years of gas pouring down the side. It probably ate away the paint and the, left the uh, sheet metal exposed, and then it just started to rot through. Um, so this hood, I mean, a good body man could probably save this hood. Um, I just feel like, like I said, it would be easier and more cost effective to just buy another good hood off of a parts tractor. I just have to make sure it's off of a later 60 because the earlier 60s had the fuel fill back here uh, towards the rear and then sometime in 54, early 54, they, they moved it up there. Um, so I just have to make sure I find the correct uh, hood for this year. I'm going to reuse the dash column. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. I figure I'll get all new gauges and stuff like that. Um, I think these headlights were replaced too because the original headlights should be black if I'm not mistaken. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Um, actually, it looks like these were painted over. I just noticed that now. Huh. Interesting. Um, the steering shaft is kind of foobard. Um, I found out the reason this got bent is because uh, when my uncle was moving it out from the back 40 there, he was uh, bringing it up along the hedgerow here and I guess the way he had the tractor chained up to the bucket of the loader, um, the chain slipped and it basically folded in against the loader and bent the steering shaft. Um, so, I mean, I could probably heat it up and straighten it back out, but I'd rather just, like I said, kind of like with the hood, I would rather just uh, find another good steering shaft and good steering wheel. Um, Honestly, I think I may have to do the same for the, the nose cone, too. Like I said, a good body man could probably straighten out these panels, but there's plenty of parts tractors out there. The screens are junk. Um, I don't even want to know how this happened. But, uh, yeah, that nose cone is pretty rough. I will save that front emblem, though, definitely. It wasn't uncommon for dealers to repaint demonstrator tractors before they sold them. So, my grandfather bought this tractor when it was only two years old, but it's uh, it's already been repainted. I, I'm assuming it was repainted by the dealership before they sold it, because if you look closely, you can see where the, the decals are doubled up. You see the power steering decal here, but then you can see another, the older one right behind it. 
Um, you might be able to see it better on this side. Yeah, you can see it there. So, uh, I'm hearing that that was actually not uncommon for dealers to do that, to try and, you know, pretty up a, a what was basically a used tractor. Uh, but this tractor didn't have a whole lot of runtime on it when my grandfather bought it, so he, I think he still got a pretty good deal. The uh, flywheel cover could definitely be reused. It's not too far gone, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but the rest of the sheet metal is in less than ideal condition. As far as tires go, uh, at least as far as the fronts go, I'm not exactly sure what kind of tires I want to put on the front yet. I have to worry about getting rid of these 18-inch rims and getting the correct 16s for it, first of all. Um... As far as the rears are concerned, uh, what I'm planning to do is go oversized, get a set of uh, 14 9 by 38s um, They're a little bit bigger than stock, but I think they look pretty good. They look a little aggressive. Um, I think 15 5 and 16 9 by 38s are a little bit too big. I want this thing to look, you know, fairly stock, but I do like the look of larger tires. Um, so I do plan to get 14 9 38s. I'm thinking maybe the Firestone 23 degree tires since those have seemed to be everybody's favorite. Um, they say the 23 degree tread pattern actually grips better than 45 degree treads like uh, like on these older tires. Um, and Firestones are a you know, pretty reputable brand. So uh, that's probably the route I'm going to go as far as tires are concerned. Um, but the 14 or uh, yeah 14 9 38 tires will not fit on these 11 by 38 double bevel rims so uh, when it comes time to actually get new tires I'm gonna have to just buy new rims too I have to get the wider double bevel rims because these won't work like I said I just bought these for the time being so we can mount them up and move the tractor around the yard a lot easier so that's just an update on the status of the 60 project for you guys um, I know it's nothing special but at least now it's you know sitting out here uh, out in the open and uh, I'm you know working on it little by little so uh, when my uncle and I get some time, we're going to get the tires mounted up and then get it, uh, try rolling it around the yard, see if we can get that engine broke loose. Um, so I'm hoping to make a video of that. I think that'll be pretty cool. We're just working on it little by little. You know, we've both got work to do, so um, we've got our work cut out for us. And uh, once we get the engine broke loose, I, I want to get it moved inside. I really can't stand to see this thing sit outside any longer. So that'll be nice to get it under cover. Now that my grandfather has passed away, uh, I've, I'm taking it upon myself to restore this tractor in his honor, so it will be restored in his memory, and I'm going to put a big plaque on the side with his name on it. Um, you know, he was the longtime owner of this tractor. Aside from the dealership using it for the first couple of years, he, you know, he owned this thing its entire life, and it's been in the family for 63 years now. So, um, and as far as I'm around, it will never leave the family. Uh, before he passed, my grandfather and I were talking, and he said, "Oh, you should probably just junk that thing. It couldn't be saved." But uh, I kind of took that as a challenge accepted. So, uh, you know, I, I've seen tractors in way worse condition than this get brought back from the dead, too. So this this isn't too, too bad. I mean, there are, I have seen way worse. Um, so, you know, I don't care if it takes me 10 years to get this thing restored, but it'll happen. Just, you know, little by little. But uh, anyway, that's an update on, uh, you know, what's been going on in my life and an update on the 60 project and the plans moving forward. So, uh I'm really excited to start making videos on this restoration project. It's going to take a long time, but we'll get it done one way or another. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I've got a lot of other YouTube videos planned. Uh, I actually have some old clips I'm going to throw together and upload for you, so uh, you have those to look forward to. Um, so thanks for watching. Have a good one. And uh, if you like this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And uh, take care.